Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying the 13 Nights of Halloween Marathon. It was fun for Big and me to record them, but editing them and getting them up every day is work. You can make my job easier by uh, commenting, whether on Facebook, on the pages themselves, or in our forums. You know, let us know that you're enjoying it or lie, pretend to enjoy it. You wives out there, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, if you can spare it, toss us a little bit of a donation. It will make the editing of the rest of these episodes easier on me. Thanks. It's time for the 13 Nights of Halloween. A marathon with the Toon Steve Boys, Big Anklevich, and Rish Outfield. Hey, this is Rish Outfield. And Big Anklevich, welcome to another day of 13 nights of Halloween. How do you think it's going so far? I was going to say the opposite of swimmingly. Do you know what that word might actually be? Drowningly. Ah, drowningly. That's, that's perfect. That's about how it's going. But somebody on the forum said that they were looking forward to it, didn't they? Or, or was that I'm my imagination? I'm sure they regret that by now. Well, it's all for you, Damien. <laughs> That's right. I uh, drive up the freeway to get to your house. Uh-huh. And I don't think you would have seen it unless you'd come down my way. But there may be... My way? My way? Which way is my way? You hide behind the rock! Or here and wait for him to go by and then you hit him with it. <laughs> I, I know that's not the line, but the voice is correct. My way is not very sportsmanlike. There may be these billboards up north where you are, but mm -hmm. it's Halloween season and there are these big billboards for haunted houses, uh -huh. which are a huge deal here. And not so huge anywhere, anywhere else. Anywhere in the entire world. Um, which is so, so strange because... I mean, as f***ed up as the place we live in <laughs> is, it should be like the town of Footloose everywhere, but it isn't. <laughs> I mean, and ironically, the town of Footloose is where I grew up. But anyhow, they had these billboards for these haunted houses. And there's one in particular, I'm assuming, but there's one close to my city that has this really revolting zombie close, close up. I mean, you don't even see like the top of its head. It's just from chin to eyes or whatever with the effed up contact lenses in and its mouth is open and like black stuff is coming out of its mouth. Anyway, it is kind of upsetting. And today on the radio, one of the DJs said that she lived in my town and was driving up to work and she sees this and it bothers her because every time she's in the car with her kids, her kids see that and it freaks them out. And so, she, you know, of course, her being local says, you know, they need to take those down and they need to put the people in jail who came up with Halloween. <laughs> OK, she she didn't go that far. Uh, I think beating with batons is what she wanted. Uh, not not actual jail time, just beatings. But the the idea of, you know, being super protective of your children and this is too scary for children or this, you know, what will the you know, think of the children kind of thing. I mean, that's always bothered me. I worked at a video store when Forrest Gump came out on video and there was this big corporate policy that was made because somebody complained about the, the they called it the pornography that was in Forrest Gump. There was a there was a customer, a male customer who complained that we had pornography showing on the screen. You know, it's like, yeah, there was a scene of pornography. He used that word like seven times in his angry letter. Uh, there was a scene of pornography in, in Forrest Gump. And so we mm -hmm. were no longer able to show Forrest Gump. But it's always bothered me the, you know, think of the children. How am I supposed to explain this to my children kind of thing? But it made me think, you know, that it's Halloween season. And for the most part, Halloween has been sort of a kid centric thing, or maybe it was traditionally an adult centric thing. And it's become more and more child friendly as they realized there's money in that. Uh -huh. But uh, it made me think about like all the stories and all the things that are scary to kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people that will talk about, you know, I saw so-and-so when I was seven years old and it f f scarred me for life. <laughs> you already and, used the F and, word earlier. Uh, yeah, but I probably to have to cut it, it out. It. And so I thought, well, that would be a fun topic of conversation where you talk about something that's ostensibly for kids, something that is made for kids, 
but freaks them out or freaks out adults. And I mean, I, I, I'm sure you have something in mind, but just well, Sunday. Barney is for kids, but freaks adults out, I think. I'd say any kid who watched Barney would be in his 30s now. So you're dating yourself, sir. But Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was on. And uh, that, that has the scary tunnel. I think we may have even have talked about the scary oh, tunnel. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we've mentioned the, the uh, how it should have ended version of Willy Wonka where it ends at the scary tunnel. I was sort of watching out of the corner of my eye because... For some reason, whatever channel it was, it was like Encore or something like that, showed Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory on the same afternoon. And uh, the scene that the, the, the two scenes that I saw were the one where like Augustus Gloop goes into the it's diarrhea, right? He gets he drowns in <laughs> diarrhea. And then the scary tunnel. Where it's just like, you know, can you remember even no what he says? Any, no way of knowing where it's scary tunnel. Ash, not a candy making tunnel. He sings, yeah, there's no earthly way of knowing. I always use that line, but I can't tell you for the life of me what comes after that. But, you know, everything gets all really effed up. And they, there's there's like a giant centipede or something like that. An image of a centipede. And then there's a chicken getting its chicken head cut its off. Chicken head cut off in the uh, sky or whatever of, ever of the scary tunnel. And I, th I thought of that at the time. It's like, oh, I want to talk to Big about that. And then today, her complaining about the freaked out children made me think, okay, that's that's today. I'm I'm talking about it. Do you know what I'm... Okay, give me an example of, to pretend that you know what I'm talking about. An example of something that is supposed to be for kids but is scary or something that kids shouldn't see like in a billboard of a zombie? Yeah, they don't really go together. It's It's, it's kind of like those idiots that like peanut butter and celery. Yeah. No, you're right. They're, they're not related topics, except for... Think of the children. There are things that are entertainment for kids that are really scary. Or okay. things that are entertainment for kids, and you sit down with your kids, and you're like, holy crap, that is scary. But the kids don't seem to notice it. Because like the scary tunnel thing... I don't think that bothered me as a kid. Yeah, it but never as an bothered adult, me I'm either. like, holy moly, that is effed up. Yeah, it is a little effed up, but it never bothered me when I was a kid either. I didn't care. And I remember even in film school, I used that scene as an to example. To get into a girl's pants. Well, that too. But as an example in a, in a report that I had to do with a group, we were talking about something. I don't even remember. The kind of things that you would put on film if you were on weed or something. I don't remember what the topic of the report was about. But, uh, yeah, we used it for something. Yeah, so that didn't scare me at all. You know, one, I think we mentioned it just a little while ago in our episode about the uh, soundtracks. But the movie Coraline, I assume that's supposed to be for a child. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that because I'm a Westerner who thinks automatically that animation, animation is, for is for children. And maybe they didn't really mean this to be for children. But it was Henry Selleck. That's an American. Okay, well, I, I, see, I assume it is for children. I don't know if I'm wrong or not, but that was scary as frick, man. <laughs> that was a scary film. The whole idea about it was really scary. The idea of the buttons replacing the buttons, your eyes yes. is scary as crap. Where she comes in and she thinks it's her mother and then the mother turns. And she's, and she's got, got buttons, buttons for, for eyes. eyes and all of them have buttons and they want her to be able to put buttons in her eyes. And then you see the dead children that have the buttons in their eyes. We wanted her to be happy, so we let her put in the buttons. And now... And they've got like their mouths open really big. And they never move. Their mouths are just like, all the time. <laughs> Dude. And there was so much crap about that movie that was just scary as c And that's supposed to be for kids, I think. But we talked about the Jim Carrey Christmas Carol. And oh. they went out of their way to make that scary. I mean, it's weird because it's juxtaposed with insipid, falling down, slap your forehead, physical comedy. You know, for, I guess, Stupid. Jim Carrey fans that peaked with Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber, I guess. But uh, then you get, like, the stuff with Marley's jaw. and the, Yeah, it was just and, awful. It's not the kind of thing that, like, scary, but it's just, like, gross. You know what I mean? It's just like... Oh, see, I thought it was scary. I mean, the, the ghost of Christmas yet to come is always 
always scary. But I mean, yeah, the, they didn't have just everything magical and stuff up to the point where he's mm-hmm. in the cemetery. It was scary. I mean, from the first moment when the the Scrooge, the 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 knocker right. says his name, I. But I don't know. I see because I again, I'm an adult, and I'm perceiving this as being for children. Right. Oh, I wonder if that story is. Can you think? Do you think Dickens wrote it for children to begin with, or was it not that way? And no, I don't think it was for children ever. Right. I don't think it was. And and even films that have been made from it. Until we got to Mickey's Christmas Carol, I would say it's all generally adult kind of people that it's aimed at. Well, there was the Mr. Magoo one, but, you know, oh. history has tried to blot that out. Yeah, I remember The Simpsons referred to Mr. Magoo. <laughs> I think Homer stayed up late one night and he saw Mr. Magoo's uh, Christmas Carol and he was his life was changed by it. And they're like, you've never seen this before, Dad? <laughs> I remember that. That was the first exposure he had had to that story yeah. was the Mr. Magoo version. And, you know, I showed Coraline, Coraline to my kids and they did not. And they were scared by it. They didn't like it. Oh, OK. How, and, how about Corpse Bride? Have you shown that to your kids? Uh, did you ever give it back? <laughs> my, my niece wanted to borrow that the other day and I couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure I gave it back. I don't have it. I know that much. I don't know if they ever watched Corpse Bride or not. We did watch that Christmas Carol that you were talking about, though. And I think the kids the were a little Carey disturbed one. by it, but also just like bored by it. I don't think they thought it was very good. They were not, in- they were not amused. I remember, in fact, we talked about it just with the spider episode. Your wife was upset at the scariness of the, of the Harry Potters. Mm-hmm. Saying, you know, this should be rated R. <laughs> okay, maybe she didn't go that far. NC-17, I think, is what she said. We perceive, th- we can't anticipate what kids will find scary, I don't think. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when Toy Story 3 came out, there were a lot of people saying, oh, geez, that incinerator scene is going to be hard for kids to watch. And no, kids don't give a shit. <laughs> it's adults that it is hard to watch. Yeah. You know, it's, it's but oh, here's one. When we were kids, Return to Oz came out. Now, granted, that has been happily forgotten. But they had these creatures called wheelies that were people melded with bicycles that I remember there was something so wrong about that that it was, I, yeah, I never watched Return to Oz again, ever. Um, Nobody else did it's either. 20 <laughs> 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 I vaguely remember that coming out. Okay, I think. Well, I'm sure there are better I don't examples. remember a thing about it, though, I have to say. Um, I don't know if there are better examples. I can't come up with them off the top of my head, unfortunately. But you don't remember there being any movies that were not horror movies as a child that really scared you. Uh, you know, just like like that scene in Willy Wonka or something where it's just like, wow, that it's been such a long time, sadly, since I was a kid that those a lot of those things have left me. You know what I mean? And yes, the the, the dementia, the the onset adult. Dementia yeah, the early is, onset dementia has it's not early anymore. <laughs> has removed some of those things from my memory. Uh, you know, I, I've I think I've mentioned it before on the show or maybe I haven't. And I've only just talked to you with you off mic about it. But. The Mike Myers Cat in the Hat film. I think I've I've mentioned to you about how my son the green was stuff. deathly no pink was deathly afraid. There was like a box that the Cat in the Hat gets like thing one and thing two out of and all this stuff and they do their crazy stuff at the start and then like somehow the lid on the box is left off or something like that and this pink goo is oozing out and it's gonna turn the whole world into cat in the hat world or something and you know it has this goo coming out and it plays like ominous music or something and my my son shat his pants right there in the theater and years later still could not watch that like five years later he's like 10 years old at this point and my wife gets the movie and puts it on and the kids are all watching it and then she looks around she's like hey where'd he go and she goes and sees him like in the panic room with the door closed and like, you know, he's hugging his teddy bear and crying and sobbing to himself because of this thing. It's, uh, I don't understand it at all. How cotton candy coming out of a box is something so terrifying, but it scares the living crap out of him somehow. 
Now, if you met the filmmaker, the person that made Cat in the Hat. Would I kick him in the nuts? Yes. Okay. Not because of the pink goo either. Oh. Okay, well, what I was going to say, but no, that's actually a much better answer. The, uh, what I was going to say is if you met him and asked him if he gets wasn't that Wasn't it Ron lot, Howard? Gosh, I hope not. No, Ron no, Howard like, made the execrable Grinch. Movie. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he was, but his company was, it was like an Imagined Pictures, but I don't think was he actually it? Wow. was. Yeah. That guy okay, made sorry. Splash. He needs to stop. Go back to what you were saying before I interrupted. If you ask that filmmaker... Oh, does he get it a lot? Would he get that a lot? I would think not. But you never know. It's a movie made for kids. I mean, the book, it's thinner than like one knuckle. You know what I mean? It's like if you were going to pour a drink and you say like a knuckle, it's, it's way thinner than that. It's like 24 pages or something. But the pink goop is in the book. No. No? No, it's, there's nothing in the book. It's 24 pages. The cat comes and he like flies kites in their house and they're like, oh no, you're making a mess. Mom's going to come home and be upset. And then it's over. Like that's the whole book. uh, Surely him wanting to have intercourse with the mother is from the book. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Who wouldn't put that in a kid's book? Where his hat goes boing, boing, boing. (laughs) She she was hot. (laughs) And he opens up the picture frame of it and it folds out like a friggin' centerfold. So you're selling, you're making me want to watch this terrible film. When he picks up the the hoe from off the ground and says, dirty hoe. What? Are you kidding me? Are you making this up? (laughs) I wish I was. The sad thing is, like, I used to read that book, The Cat in the Hat, to my son, like, every day when, when he was little, little. And this movie, when did the movie come out? Like, 2000. Three or four, or something like that. I don't know. It marks the end of civilization. I, know <laughs> it, but. I mean, I used to read that book to my son like every night, and I would do voices, and I had the cat in the hat voice and the fish voice and all that stuff for the book. And like, it was like our special book that we read together. Like, it was our thing was to read the cat in the hat and to do the voices and. The sad thing is like that I, I was all excited to take my son to this movie and it was going to be like a special thing and instead it just sucked. And it almost like ruined the book for us together anymore. Like after that, it was never the same or something. I don't know. It's just weird. You really shouldn't have taken a 15 year old to that movie anyway. But Yeah. Okay, well, I, I I thought that this would be a fascinating topic and you'd have stories and you know, because you have a different perspective than I do of childhood i mean a you grew up in abject poverty (laughs) where you had a big distended stomach and flies on your eyes but two you have just an enormous cavalcade of children and with each one you have different experiences i would think but every once in a while i'll be showing something to the boy to my nephew and my sister will say is that appropriate for him and that doesn't ever even occur to me because it's like, well, I wouldn't show him something if it you're, wasn't appropriate. But You were the one that was showing him the omen one time, though. Yeah, but he was like one and a half. He couldn't understand anything. <laughs> right? I don't know. Yeah, like, I, I, this is the weirdest thing. I was working on the podcast last night, and he knocked on the door. And I looked, and it was like 1.35 a.m. And I said, oh, did you have a bad dream? Are you okay? What's going on? And he says, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I I was just working on something. And he's like, can I watch you work? And I was like, dude, you need to go to sleep. It's really, really late at night. He's like, no, I'm going to just watch you work. And so I went downstairs and I started working down there. And I brought him and put a blanket around him. And and I said, you know, what do you want to watch? And so he looked through my DVDs and we put on Iron Man. And I haven't seen Iron Man in years. But uh, while we were watching it and there was all these explosions and, and Iron Man's just kicking the crap out of all these brown people. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, not just even kicking the crap out. It's setting them on fire and blowing up the things around them so that they blow up and stuff. They're essentially the Nazis of the 21st century, these brown people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, you know, I apologize if that's insensitive or if I shouldn't have said that. But it's just they weren't even human beings is what I'm saying. You know, we, we talked about it for years and years. Nazis weren't people. You could kill a million Nazis in a movie and it's okay because they're yeah. Nazis. They're, they're the equivalent bad. of today's like aliens or robots. You just make the bad guys aliens or robots because then you can just shoot them up and it doesn't matter because they're not people. Yeah, there's a stigma of killing uh, when you realize that there are people involved, you know what I mean? And yet in Iron Man, 
it doesn't matter. We don't care. And, it, you know, I, maybe if you're a big fan of the comic books, that bothered you because he's killing people left and right. Like Captain America kills people in Avengers. And it never even occurred to me. It was like, well, maybe Cap has a line, you know, where he won't kill like Batman or something like that. But he was a soldier fighting Nazis. Why wouldn't he? You know, that sort right. of thing is, is that's my justification. But this little boy has seen Iron Man in the cartoons where it's my understanding that you still you can't even use the word kill. Right. And then he's seeing the, he shoots these guys with the flamethrower and they're going ah! <sighs> and you cheer. Anyway, I, this isn't a Halloween topic. I just realized. But who cares? <laughs> it just the whole time I'm getting this visceral thrill of seeing these people burn and die and blow up and that. But I did look over and I wondered, maybe this isn't appropriate for a little boy. <sighs> it's just... And, and, and when he fights Ironmonger at the end, okay, okay so we watched till three in the morning until finally I was like, oh, shoot, it's three. I, I, I This is a long movie. <laughs> Sorry, man. And so I tucked him in, went to bed, and I was just like, oh, geez. Because, see, my sister works like from six in the morning on on Mondays, and so I always have the kids... You know, it's it's my responsibility to be with the kids. But, you know, he didn't act tired today. Anyway, we finished the movie today and there's this big scene with with Ironmonger. You've seen the movie. You know what I'm talking about. And Ironmonger falls into the arc reactor and the arc reactor blows up. And the little boy said, did he die? And I was like, yes. I was just happy, you know. (laughs) And then again, I was like, whoops. uh, You said, F, yes, he did. Mother (laughs) Yes, he deserved to die. I hope he burns in hell. Tuck a man in his dream. But I didn't know if that was inappropriate or not. Because this little boy knows the Avengers from cartoons. Right. Where I think the violence, it's still surprisingly violent, I think. The cartoon? The cartoon. But its they still pull their punches more than I would. Yeah. I think they're taking the uh, cue from those Batman cartoons. From the 90s where like they made him more adult friendly and did wonderful business in doing so. I mean, they whatever they're doing on that cartoon or whatever they did, because it's no more, worked great because I enjoy it as much as the kid does. Cool. Anyhow, I, I, I'm sorry. I, just, I thought that would be an interesting topic of conversation of things that it's are fairly scary to adults but aren't scary to children. <sighs> Side note. Complete yeah. sidetrack. I watched Iron Man 2 not too long ago with uh, my kids. Okay. They do continue to use that Iron Man. I don't believe you. Not for it was a second. I'm sorry. In the fight when uh, Whiplash comes out and chops the car in half with his thing and then he has to use the suitcase one. I heard it in there and so I was like, huh. It's not like prominent like it was in the first one, but it's still there. Joss in his commentary says that there's a Loki theme that's recurring and a black widow theme that's recurring would you have any idea what he's talking about i don't know what they are but i've only but you have the soundtrack i I do i haven't listened to it enough to be able to say i haven't seen the movie since it was in the theater it's still in the theater go again so like that's the one thing you know you can really start to know the soundtrack when you've seen the movie enough where you hear it on the soundtrack and then you watch the movie you're like oh here's the part where that music plays yeah and then Again, you, you've watched the movie, then you go and you listen to the music and you're like, oh, this must be the part where they're doing this kind of a thing. You start to mesh them across back and forth. Because basically what I've got now is a piece of music that is all on its own kind of a thing. And there's very few parts where I can say... Evocative of nothing, right? Or right. Well, there do are... Do you get a sense of by listening to it and think, well, maybe this is the scene where... Yeah, you can get that somewhat. And there are some parts where I know exactly where it's from, you know, like the guitar music that starts up when they're showing like the pictures of people and the candles and stuff where it's the very end. Oh, Okay. Iron Man saved my life. Uh, right, that in bit. New York. Yeah. What will they think of next? Yeah, that stuff. You know, you know exactly. And there's a few other things that I can say exactly where they go. And the song titles give you a little idea as far as that too. But beyond that, you don't know it as well to be able to pick out. Oh, this is Black Widow's theme because you don't know where Black Widow's appearing and why you would be able to associate that with her. 
you would get that a lot more, I'm sure, from watching the film and hearing it than just from listening to the soundtrack by itself. It's funny. We're talking about movie scores again. But I, I just I love that when they give somebody a theme. Yeah, me too. And it plays. And, and that, I, I think we talked about it in our six hour Avengers episode. But if we didn't, I'll talk another hour about Avengers. But when Cap is in the helicarrier trying to help Iron Man and he's fighting the guys... They play the theme, the Alan Silvestri Captain America theme from the the previous movie. Uh And that always takes me by surprise for some reason. Every time I've seen it, I was like, oh, I forgot that they do that. Even though I'd mentioned it. Yeah, I think that they play it a little when he shows up at that one part where Loki's got everybody like kneeling and Mm. all that. And then Captain America, I think you hear it for a second there too. Our friend Ian, did I tell you that that he when he oh he moved knew the to guy California or something yeah, he like that? lived in that guy's house or in his guest house or something the the old man that says there will always be men like you we've been waiting for a man like you to return see Kyle wait no mm. that didn't happen mm. I'll cut that shoot can, let's just talk about Avengers instead of uh, do this Christmas Day okay Christmas. from from this point on it's the thirteen, 13 days, days of, of Avengers. Avengers. And so next episode, we will talk about the Mewling Quim line, okay? <laughs> okay? Okay. All hey, right. Well, thanks thank for listening, for folks. What he said. Coming up next, Mewling Quim. Not say for work. What does a Mewling Quim sound like? Tune in next time when you may hear this. <laughs> See you later, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. Are you recording? Yes. He's sitting on the big goofy cartoon looking throne thing and talking like that. <laughs> Shrieked at once and he knew that they must suffer. And he's like, oh, the two guys just like scooting away subtly the whole time. <laughs> you sure you're recording? Yes. Okay. See that little red dot on the little recording program? Mm-hmm. That means it's recording. Okay. Sorry, too long.